She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson, and we are here every single day, almost, well, seven days a week. You can find us on YouTube, but six days a week on the radio and television. And we're excited to talk to you today about a very important topic that hinders you from success. This show is constantly challenging the status quo of success. And we want to help you redefine success for you. And there's one component that hinders you more than any other component, and that is the power of fear. Today is a day where you're going to tackle your fears. Today is a day where we're going to help you discover where they're coming from and how to take them down. There is a calling on your life, my friend. There is. There is something that is calling out of you. It is called a destiny, and that destiny needs you to step up and go for it. Instead of pulling back, shrinking back, and having setback after setback and not getting up to bring springboard in the place where you're supposed to go. So if you know of anyone right now who battles with fear, you might want to text them, get on your social media, and let them know, come, listen to today's program. Danny Johnson's talking about fear. I had to overcome a lot of fears, friend. I really did. I had so many of them. In fact, even just recently, I got confronted with a fear that was rolling around inside of my soul that I had not addressed, that I had not even realized was there. It it just kind of floated in a sneaky little devil that kind of snuck in, in the background, behind the scenes. And then pretty soon, man, I found myself just kind of not not gripped like I used to be, um, but just Mm, holding back, just completely holding back and not stepping into the places where I knew I should have been uh, stepping into. It feels so much better when you tell fear to go to hell where it belongs. So fear, it is actually a a topic that we uh, are asked to address a lot. Uh, A lot of people, in fact, whenever we do our first steps to success and creating a dynasty training seminar, uh, which is a three-day intensive program in helping to develop you with strategies and skills to tackle your career, grow your income, uh, grow your money, get out of debt, and improve all of your relationships at the same time, and, and go after those things that are inside of you, those dreams and those aspirations that are nagging at you, uh, and doing it all with your family. Uh, and well, as you're improving relationships and improving your finances, you're going after those dreams all at the same time, which means you're going to have more fun and less stress. So when we do these seminars, we ask our clients a question. They fill out a questionnaire. And if they had five minutes uh, to be able to ask a question, any question they wanted, the number one question has to do with fear and obstacles, um, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-worth. These are the most common questions that are asked concerning these particular things. People seem to be petrified to to just even live. It's not even so much about your dreams anymore and going after certain goals. That is not even uh, uh, in the equation anymore. It's more of um, just afraid to get out of bed, afraid to live, afraid of making a mistake, afraid of being rejected, afraid of being laughed at, afraid of being embarrassed, afraid of failing again. And it seems that as we get older in life, we seem to add more fears to our life. Um, When we're younger, we seem to have less fears. And as we get older, and I think part of it is, is that we gain too much knowledge in the wrong places. And the more that we know and experience, we then talk ourselves out of success. We talk ourselves out of dreaming. We talk ourselves out of going to the next level in our lives. And and we just kind of sit and and kind of just put ourselves in cruise control and and we pile up a bunch of excuses and and we just don't, we end up living a life that is unfulfilled. Um, And, you know, on our tombstone is nothing but a dash from the day we were born to the day that we died. And just a dash in between. Like, what did we do with our lives? I find that fear 
um, is what produces a lot of excuses in a lot of people's lives. And for the last 27 years of working with people and building businesses and, and, and my life being completely devoted to helping people to succeed in their careers, their finances, and in their relationships, um, I've encountered a lot of excuses, like hundreds of thousands of excuses. But actually, they're all the same ones. There's usually about five excuses that most, that you know, that just have different flavors around them. Uh, but today, we're going to help you. We're going to help you get over those fears, and we're going to demolish those excuses so that you can become much more successful. We asked a question on Facebook, how does fear affect your everyday life? Finish this sentence. If I wasn't afraid, I would, and then fill in the blank. So we've had some people respond to that question, and they've called in today to be on today's program. We have Belinda uh, from California. Belinda, welcome to the show. Tell me, what is your answer to that question? If I wasn't afraid, I would... Go into the uncharted waters. Yeah. Go ahead with with um, those visions and dreams and um, the calling. And what's the calling, Belinda? Well, a couple years ago, after um, beginning a horrible, um, hurtful, painful uh, divorce proceedings, uh, God started to take away Belinda's will, little by mm-hmm. little, and it was painful. He was shutting off the layers, and one of those was, you know, I'd gone to college and gone the safe route and did what Belinda wanted to do. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I found myself attending work and going, why, why don't I want to be here, and why am I not connecting, and I can't even do it? It was weird, and, and all he replaced it with was the desire to do, like, ministry to um, tell people how wonderful God was and to um, just be around uh, people who like like-minded, you know, mm-hmm. and working together mm-hmm. to um, to help. And for me, it was the youth because my mm-hmm. I have three young boys. Mm-hmm. I just saw such a big need that too many fathers are leaving the home. And I thought, yeah. well, this isn't a good example for young boys. What, mm-hmm. are, what are we to do about this become an epidemic? So God started working with me, and I have now I have a blueprint ready to go Mm -hmm. for fatherless sons. Mm -hmm. And not that my children are fatherless, but he's in their life, but children who are uh, boys who are fatherless Mm -hmm. and training them up with the Word of God, with some activities and and mentors, male mentors. Yes. And so I understand that needs funding, and it needs, um, and perhaps I need to do a side business that um, that can help, uh, you know, support it. So I'm kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And I have the blueprint. I have the desire to do a certain business in the marketplace. And so I just, it's on paper. Yep. And that's, that's where it's at right now. Right. Well, first of all, I'm really proud of you for um, allowing your God to shed the layers of ego off of you. And you're now facing the next layer the next layer. You see, ego and fear are buddies. And what is the reason why you won't step out and go do it already? What's the reason? Okay. Right. And so it would be um, possibly just going to the right resources and knowing what to do next. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Why are you not doing it? What's the reason? I get, I really need the direction what to do first. Like, Mm. Okay, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Why do you need the direction? Um, so that it's expedient and quicker than making a bunch of money. Why does it have to be expedient and quicker? <laughs> right. Um, I guess, yeah, it's just me wanting to see it already. Yeah, happen. Why? For... What if it goes um, slow? Oh, I just feel, you know, hey, we're running out of time and we got to reach you know, reach these youth and get going here. So how many youth did you reach today? Right. How um, many youth did you I reach feel, yesterday? Yeah, a reach, a, a, how, a, how many youth did you reach the day before? How many youth did you right. re- reach last week? How it's, many youth did you reach last much. month? <laughs> it's not that much. Yeah. So I feel like I have to do a whole full on program. Okay, hold on, hold on. Because you brought God into the equation in our conversation, I'm going to slap you silly. 
Okay. <laughs> I need it. Get ready, That's... baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Here we> go. <laughs> so I, I can just take it all off and just bam, come yeah. at you with this. Okay. Yeah, so here's the deal. Um, you said that your nasty divorce shed you of pride and ego and security, right? Yes, that was definitely the beginning. So can you please tell me why you are trying to go back to that habit of having all your ducks in a row, looking for the safe and secure path that's a guarantee that this is going to succeed and that you will not waste your time? Mm -hmm. What is that trying to rise up in you? Right. Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, yeah. that would be fear because it was fear that went for security to begin with. Right. 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 And you said you went your own way. You did your own thing, never even asking God, what do you want me to do? Right? Right. Here's what I know. Have you ever read the book Spirit Driven Success? Yeah, I'm almost I'm, I'm plowing through it. You're plowing through it. Yeah. And what do you remember the chapter that talks about the parable of the talents? Talent. You're not there yet in the book. Yeah, I've refreshed my memory a couple of. Mm. I think I know you, you have some lists in there, and I'm not sure which of the lists they're talking about. Like, well, the parable of the talents talks about the law of promotion, and yes. biblically, how we get promoted is by being faithful oh. with the little with the things. Skills with the little we have. The little things. Yeah. Right. So you have a blueprint. And you have a desire. You planted a desire in you. Now what you're doing is you're taking that desire and you're having to make it into some kind of a business or some big giant ministry or some big giant building, some big convoluted, complicated deal. Now let me ask you something. Let's go back to the Bible times. God tells Abraham to leave his father's house, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he tells him that he's going to take him to a land in which he does not know. And he's going to make him a nation of his own. What did did Abraham do next? He left his family. And he did what? He just proceeded. He began to walk. Exactly. He started walking where? Towards. Well, he wasn't sure. Exactly. Yeah. No way. So he started walking to a place he did not know where he was going. Right. right. He did not create some architectural plans of some nation and borders and come up with a bunch of laws and hire a police force. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Made some yeah, business cards. He didn't make some business cards. <laughs> he didn't decorate an office. Right. He didn't recruit a vice president. Right. He, he didn't lay out the whole plan first. Think about that for just a second. We're going to cut to a break. We'll continue right after this. Be sure to tell a friend about The Danny Johnson Show. It just might be the key to the breakthrough they need. Hi, this is Danny Johnson. Let me ask you something. Do you dream about being more confident, more beautiful, more powerful? Are you that girl who never learned to wear makeup and now you're lost in a sea of YouTube videos? That busy mom who can't get enough sleep and just wants to feel pretty again? Or maybe you're that professional who wants a little more respect in the office. From the boardroom to the bedroom, celebrity makeup artist Extina Harmsworth from XMH Beauty will help you. Extina has a track record of making beauty easy on any budget. Her live classes, simple step-by-step professional beauty techniques, and insider secrets will set you apart from the crowd. So don't sit on your dream another minute. Learn from the best. Get your exclusive free gift from Extina today at xmhbeauty.com forward slash Danny. That's xmhbeauty.com forward slash D-A-N-I. If you've ever wanted to make millions, change the world, be the voice for the voiceless, and have a blast doing it, then you need to spend some time with this lady right here. She's been doing it for years, and she'll show you how. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Sometimes we think too much. And when we think too much, we stop ourselves from 
success. I've been so guilty of this. I really have. Uh, A couple months ago at First Steps to Success, as I was working with about 1,200 people that were in the room and and confronting uh, fears and pride and ego, it was exposed in my own heart (laughs) that I had become fearful of my next step myself. And man, oh man, I'm telling you, I began to look for the safe route. I began to look for the secure route, the guarantee. I was wanting uh, to know for sure that if if I take that next step, is it going to work out or am I going to fail? And am I going to suffer harm because I made a mistake? Am I going to cause contention in my marriage if I if I take the next obvious state that is in front of me? Am I, am I going to somehow disrupt this beautiful, peaceful, harmonious season that my husband and I have been in? Uh, in fact, today I counted, we keep a calendar of every great day that we have, and we've had 332 days with only one five-minute little point of contention, and it wasn't it wasn't even bad. Like, we had one five-minute moment where we were not kind to each other. It's a kindness calendar. It's an encouraging calendar and an edification calendar. So every day that, that we walk in kindness, edification, and encouragement, we put an X in that box. Every day that we screw up and we're not kind, encouraging, or edifying, we have a little squiggle line in that calendar. So I counted it today, 332 days. We've had one, just one, one moment, five minute moment where we were not kind to each other. And that was it, which is amazing. And so I don't know why I was telling you that. Oh, fear. So we've had, we've kind of been in a season of bliss, right? 332 days with only one little moment. That's a lot. I mean, that's like such a peaceful, harmonious rest. My soul is at rest. Prior to that, it was contention every single week. It was contention, contention, contention with more contention, more striving, more, ah. Uh, I felt like I was in a war zone every time I went home for a, a small season while we were going through some nasty crap. So so when this new, new opportunity, there's been a bunch of opportunities that have been coming to us, one of which is a reality TV show offer, um, some uh, guest appearances on some major networks and major shows, as well as uh, people wanting to take this show, the Danny Johnson Daily Show, to an uh, even broader, bigger level than what it is on some major networks wanting to to take it and, and turn it into the next like Oprah Winfrey type show. And so lots of these opportunities are coming, and I'm sitting there going, I don't know if I should do that. I don't know if I should go in that direction, even though it is like completely obvious Obvious, obvious, a light shining the path, and and uh, I'm putting like 17 fleeces out before my God. But really, it was all driven by fear, fear that I don't want to disrupt the peace and the harmony that we have, and just being afraid that I'm going to make a mistake, being afraid that I'm going to screw it up, being afraid, being afraid, being afraid. That then turned into me being distrustful, even almost resentful. That, gosh, if only, if only, if only, if only. And I held up my my family's opinion of me. And I also was afraid that my family would reject me if I did go after this hidden little dream that's inside of me. Uh, if I actually even said what the hidden little dream is inside of me, then, then they might not be happy with me or they might not support me. You know, I backed myself into a corner. I backed myself into a corner of believing that I would not be supported by my husband and my kids. I believed for a moment that I would not be supported even by some of my coworkers. And I started to just crawl into a little corner and I was afraid to tell anybody even. I even got to the point where I was afraid to tell anybody, anyone in my office, anyone in my family about these opportunities that were coming in our direction. And one of which is like a really nice shoe fit. Like it was like custom made for us, for Danny johnson.com for what we do, what we represent, and what we believe in, this this crazy opportunity that has come. I now, because I'm done homeschooling, I've graduated, I don't have those responsibilities anymore, which means I have more time to do more things and to pursue some things that are important to me. And so, uh, so I did. I backed myself in a corner. I was looking for the safe, secure route. And you know, as I read the best success book ever written, I see... And I remember, this is crazy. I was even praying one morning, like, God, I really need to know what you want me to do because I don't want to make a mistake. I just want, I want to make sure that I, that I just that I never screw up because I don't want to let you down or let anyone else down. And therefore that my life would be, and I went, 
And I said, well, you know, like Abraham, like, hold on a second. Abraham trusted God. He walked with God. He screwed up. And there were consequences for the screw up. And God used the consequences to bless him and to bless all generations after him. Same with Moses. I get this in my head that if I act right and I don't do anything wrong, if I, if I, and I, I never want to do anything wrong. That's my heart. I never want to do anything wrong. And sometimes you do something wrong without even knowing that you've done something wrong. And, and so here I'm, 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 I'm fearful. And so in that fear, I, I become paralyzed until the day that he showed me that I'd been fearful and I had to confess it as complete sin and walk away from the fear and move forward in faith. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do with your life? Discover your own answer. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. Fear is a liar. Fear is sneaky. Fear is not your friend. Fear is not your companion. Fear is your enemy and it must be stopped. It robs billions of people every day. It robs billions of people every single day. It cannot rob you from this day moving forward. We're talking about those things that you would do if you were not afraid. Joining me right now, we've got Megan McCollum from Maryland. Megan, what are you afraid of? Hi, Danny. Thank you so much for having me on the show, first off. Um, I'm afraid that there is too much to do in such a little time, and I think that if I think about my words and my time and my day, I just become unproductive. Yeah. So what is it in you that thinks that everything has to get done fast? I... I guess what it comes back from my mom, because mom would be, you know, at 12 o'clock and half the day's already shot. And that's how I am. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning and by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm thinking, well, heck, that half the day's over. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, wow. Yeah. Five o'clock in the morning. morning. And by 10 a.m., yeah. you already feel defeated. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Do you want to live your mother's life? Or is she living her own life? She's living her own life. I'm going to live mine. Yeah. And so one of the ways you're going to live your own life is you're going to disregard that very belief that she planted in you. That it's noon already, the day is already shot. That's a belief that is shooting the rest of your day. Yeah. And causing the rest of your day to be unproductive. So you have a choice right now, honey. You're right. There's a lot to get done in such a short period of time. So maybe what you should do is adjust your timeline. What happens is that we add so much that we want to get done in a day that it ends up paralyzing us because we know we can't possibly get it done in a day. And if we actually did, we are already looking at tomorrow where we got 42 other things that needs to get done the next day. So Mm. tell me. Is there any celebration in the thing that you just finished? No. Never. So you are never patting yourself on the back of, I just finished two things. You actually disregard the two things that you just completed. You ignore it, and you don't build your confidence on it. All you're looking at is, now it's day three, and I got 47 things that I need to accomplish. And even when you accomplish the 47 things, you still don't even feel good about yourself. Because there's no celebration, Megan, in your life. 
Celebration is so important for the soul. Joy is important. It's medicine. Laughter, medicine for the soul. And we have to work at a pace that is joyful, that is pleasurable, that has you feeling at the end of it all, I accomplished something great today. And I hate it when, especially a certain personality, they never feel like they're accomplishing anything, but they're accomplishing more than everybody else that's around them. Highly productive people. What has to come along with highly productive people is a highly celebratory person, person, where they are celebrating what they are accomplishing, celebrating what they are finishing. Stopping for a minute and go, I finished that. That's okay. done. Because, Megan, you're feeling like a failure, honey. Yeah. You're feeling like you're nothing. And you're feeling yeah. like you're running hard and going nowhere. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. You, do you think that that's why your father in heaven put you on this earth? No. You think he wants Not his beautiful, accomplished, talented daughter who that when you when he looks at you, it takes his breath away? Do you do you think that your father wants you to feel like you're accomplishing nothing? No, not at all. You do not need to take on your mother's insecurities. This is why it's so important that when we're raising kids, we got to watch our mouths. Mm. We got to watch our mouths because I'm sure that very statement that your mother would say without thinking has come out of your mouth. Many times. And do you have kids? No, I do not. Thank God. <laughs> Who are you telling you're Utah, because I'm still working myself and trying to figure out this before we have kids. Yeah. Well, it's time to have kids. It's time to have kids. Because what kids, can I tell you what my kids did to me? My, yeah. my kids made, made, made me a better person. Having kids. I've heard that from a lot. It's so true. Having kids. There's nothing, oh, I'm going to cry. There's nothing else in my life that has ever helped me to be a better person than my kids. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They are my greatest accountability. My greatest accountability. And so it's time to make a baby. You could text your husband. Let him know. We're going to make a baby tonight. <laughs> I have instructions. My assignment tonight is to make a baby. In fact, honey, could you come home now? I need to make a baby now. Go ahead. You could text him and tell him that you have an assignment and, and you have accountability partner to make sure that you're having lots of sex, lots and lots and lots of sex so that you have a baby. Anyway, kids are going to make you better and they're going to hold you accountable because when you look at this beautiful, human, precious being, you want to do your very best for them. Mm -hmm. You want to do your very best. And that's what you need in your life is to do your very best. And so you're not going to live your mom's life. You're not going to be your mom. I know she did her best. I know that she um, probably poured a lot of great things into you. She put up with your poopy diapers. She put up with you peeing your little panties. She put up with you with, with spaghetti all over your face and, and throwing your green beans on the floor and, and throwing your bottle across the room. She put up with a lot with you, a lot. Don't, don't even talk about the stretch marks or the bleeding. Forget about it. It's when she was nursing you. Let's not even talk about that, okay? But she did her best, and you got the chance to learn what you will do different, what you will do better, because that's what we're supposed to pass down from one generation to the next is something right. better, okay? So you're not your mom. You don't need to believe that belief. You are a highly productive woman, and I need you to celebrate everything you finish every single day. Adjust your list of things to do. Adjust them. So you set yourself up for success instead of failure. And I want you to reward yourself each day with patting yourself on the back saying, good job. You did that. You finished that. This is awesome. Reward yourself by not piling on inhuman timelines, mm -hmm. but having breathing room, having breathing room to enjoy life. All right? Megan, thanks so much right. for sharing. This is awesome. All right. We have uh, Denise Clark from Georgia. Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you, Danny. Hi. Hi. What are you afraid of? Oh, um, 
you know, I've been trying for years to figure that out. Um, one of the things that I've heard you say at uh, the events is, you know, if you could do anything, you if you could do anything, right? Money was not an object. Yeah. Um, what would you do? And I freeze, and I do the same thing when I work. Um, I've got a great business. I've got everything I need. I've got you know resources. I've got advertising. I've got a phone, and I freeze. I. I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's keeping me from working that, knowing how simple it is for me to be able to not only increase my income, but to make a great income. Yeah. And um, the other day I woke up and I felt the word um, worthless just coming across like in my brain, like mm-hmm. like that ticker in Times Square. Yeah. And um, I don't know, do all those things go together. I don't know what I'm afraid of, but something's stopping me and it's stopping me in a big way and causing me a tremendous amount of stress and financial stress too. Is this something um, that also has hit you when you're working for somebody else? When I work for somebody else, I do follow directions and I do what I'm told. Um, And I do a great job. It's, uh, yeah. When it comes for working for yourself. So when it comes for working for yourself, now you're crippled with fear. Yeah. So why yeah. would you want to work for yourself when you actually are a better worker in the marketplace when you work for someone else? Um, partly because I um, have a determination to homeschool my kids. And working from home logistically works with that. Okay. Um, so are there people you can work for working from your home? Yes, I would imagine so. No. Oh, there are that, there are hundreds yes, of thousands. Are. There are hundreds of thousands of people who work for someone else. They're employed by a company, and they work from their house. That's true. Hundreds Absolutely. of thousands of people. Yes. Yeah. 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 So here, here yeah, uh, there's tons of jobs where you get to work from your house, tons of them. And you're yeah. pretty smart. I am. And you have a long list of skill sets mm-hmm. and abilities and a lot to offer an employer who actually needs you to work from their house because they're working from their own as well. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Are you one of those people that performs best under pressure? Are you sure? Coming up next, Danny exposes a common lie that may be holding you back. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. Pressure. Pressure is one of those things that can push us to procrastination. And sometimes, unknowingly, we have a tendency of putting ourselves in a place of pressure and expecting ourselves to perform really, really well. That is setting ourselves up for failure. It's important to know who you are and know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. And if you're always trying to put yourself to work in your weaknesses, you're going to destroy who you are. You're going to feel useless. You're going to feel worthless. You're going to, you're, you're going to fail. But if you put yourself in a place where you can succeed, where you can thrive, where you can prosper, then you're going to feel awesome about yourself. You're not going to feel useless. You're not going to feel like you're a failure. 
you're going to do well. And so we just had Denise on the phone where I was asking her a question about, hold on a second. She says, when I work for myself, I, I'm paralyzed. When I work for someone else, I shine. So Denise, I'm bringing you back on. Denise, yes. you want to homeschool yeah. your kids. It's important to you. Your God knows it's important to you. Yes. There's hundreds of thousands of people that work from home that are employed by somebody else. We even, we have employees that work from their house, uh, our Smarter Networker division. In fact, all of them, all four of those employees, they, they all are managed by somebody who works from his house. He lives two hours away from our office. And he has four people. They're scattered around the country and they all work from home. That's just, that's what it is. <laughs> There's like a customer service arm of a, one of our companies that works from her house. So, I know we're not the only one, okay? We, we got a guy in the Philippines, he works from his house. Got another guy three hours away, he works from his house. So th there's tons of businesses that employ people that work from their homes. So y y it's not cut and dry, black or white here, as far as like, okay, well, in order for me to homeschool my kids, that means I have to build a business from home. No, you don't. You can build someone else's business from home while your kids, while you're homeschooling your kids, so you're not carrying the burden, Denise. You're trying to start a business and homeschool your kids at the same time, right? When you're the sole provider of the household, this, this is called double pressure. That's what this is. Let someone else carry the burden of the taxes. Let someone else carry the burden of all the business stuff. And you get to be the one that serves that business person, help that business person succeed, help that person's business grow, help to relieve them of their stress and pressure, serve them well, prosper well, and you will have the beautiful luxury of making money at the same time of homeschooling your daughters as a single mother. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Go find it. It's out there and it's waiting for you. It's already there and it's already waiting for you. I promise. I will do that. I'm excited for you. Thank you. All right. God bless. Okay. We've got, uh, we're, by the way, we're talking about, this is Danny Johnson. We're talking about fear, fear that stops us. If we knew we couldn't fail, what would we do with our life? On this show, we redefine success for you, living your life on your terms, according to your values, your morals, and, and the design that you want to live it. Live life by design, not by default. So many people live by default. It's exactly what Denise was just saying. So by default, okay, I have to build, a, I have to put myself under pressure and be an entrepreneur from my house in order to homeschool my kids because I'm a single mom. That's the only way I could do it. No, that's not true. There's, I learned this from a multimillionaire many years ago. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> There's always another solution. So get out of fear, solve the problem, make it happen. We've got Cat Perrin from Maine. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hey, Danny, how's it going? Good. So, what are you afraid of? All right, I am still working on the fear of rejection. Why would you work on the fear of rejection? Um, I've been to several of your events, um, too many to count, actually. <laughs> um, and I've been to Dynasty, which is, you know, your course. You can okay, hold on. You didn't answer my question. Why are you working on the fear of rejection? Well, let me, let me say it this way. Whatever you focus on is what you get more of. So if you're working on and focusing on the fear of being rejected by other people, what will you get more of? The same. What was that? The same. Wait, what was that? The same. What will you get more of? I want you to say it. Uh, more of the rejection? Yeah. So what makes sense to work on? Um, not being afraid of it. Mm. What do you want? I want to be able to do what I need to do without having fear of... Hold on. You're still bringing fear into the equation. What do you want? I'm not asking you to tell me what you don't want. You already told me what you don't want. What do you want? Um, I want to be able to do what I need to do and have the confidence that the people following will do what they need to do to move forward with, with their life. Right. So go focus on that and go make that happen. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. 
What you focus on is what you get more of. If you focus on the fear of rejection, you're going to have more fear of rejection. If you focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, you're going to get what you want. Does that make sense? Focus is powerful, girl. Come on, I want you to imagine this. A magnifying glass, right? I have many of them these days because I refuse to put those tiny little glasses on my eyes. I refuse to have a pair on top of my head. I refuse to have that chain. Even though I'm a grandmother of seven, I refuse to have that chain around my neck with a pair of glasses here. I refuse to have 17 pairs of glasses like my one of my best friends all over the office, all over the house, all over her car, everywhere. And she usually has one on her head going, I can't find my glasses. So I refuse to follow in the footsteps of my friends who have these little glasses. So guess what I have? A magnifying glass. <laughs> I have one by my Bible. I have one in the kitchen. I have one on my desk. I have one in my purse so that I have a magnifying glass to whatever. Like if, if you know, some, some of that print is too, you know, small and, and my eyes are, anyway, whatever. But what I found was, wow, a magnifying glass. If you take a magnifying glass, its power has the power to take the sun and set on fire a dead old leaf. It can set that on fire because a magnifying glass is a powerful focus. It's, it's focused light. So that's what a magnifying does, glass does is it focuses for you. And so it focuses the light, the sun that's passing through it, and it will catch something on fire. But if I remove the magnifying glass from the leaf, will the sun by itself have the power to catch the leaf on fire? No. No. So focus is powerful. And focus is a magnifying glass. It focuses, it controls the light through these molecules. Your brain works the same exact way, exact same way. So what you focus on is what you get more of. So if you focus on being rejected, you're going to be rejected a hundred thousand times more than if you focused on getting done what you want to get done. If you focus on helping people, you focus on helping them succeed, you focus on them succeeding and following directions and doing the job that needs to be done, guess what you're going to get? A hundred thousand times more. You're going to get the results that you're after. It's all what you focus on. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. This is The Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Go to dannyjohnson.com to find out about our next live event, First Steps to Success. Register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. Do not fear for I am with you. Hundreds of times, that's what it says in the best success book ever written. In fact, you can find this passage in Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not look around, for I am your Elohim, which means God in Hebrew. I shall strengthen you. I shall also help you. I shall also uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. What we focus on is what we get more of. Do you not receive that today? That there is nothing to fear. I shared with you earlier today in the program of a great fear that I just just got revealed to me a couple of months ago and how I just set that sucker way out. And do you know what comes into your life when you choose not to focus on what you're afraid of? What happens and what comes in your life is faith. And faith brings results. Without faith, there is no results. But if you focus on fear, you're going to die. The vision in you is going to die. You're not going to trust people. You're not going to trust yourself. You're going to find every possible negative news to listen to, to believe in. And you're eventually going to wind up 
tucking yourself underneath the covers over your head, barely breathing, almost suffocating the life right out of you, all because of what you're choosing to focus on. You're the one that's in control of your mouth and you're in control of what you look at and how you look at it. So today, choose to look at where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. I hope that you enjoyed today's program. Please leave us a comment uh, on our website, dannyjohnson.com, exactly where the show was playing. If you're listening to this on the Truth Network or UAN or GLN, the networks on radio or television, please come on over to Facebook. Come and hit the website, dannyjohnson.com. We'd love to give you a free copy of First Steps to Wealth, which is a powerful book that shows you exactly step-by-step how to go from homeless to millions, now giving millions of dollars away, how to go from poverty to wealth. It's all inside of this book, 12 chapters, 296 pages, totally free for you right now. Please go to the website, dannyjohnson.com. You can download the ebook, or if you'd like to get a physical copy, you have to call our office. Call the office for a physical free copy. You pay the shipping and handling to your house, and we'll pay for the $15 book for you. It's an investment we're making into you. You meet us halfway by taking care of the shipping and the handling. We'll get you the book in your hands and immediately start to read it. Come and join us also on Facebook, Danny Johnson Live, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Come out and meet this amazing group of people who are are working diligently to serve their God, to make more money, to attack their debt, to be better parents, to be better spouses, and to live a better life in the community under the kingdom of heaven. So please come on out to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Come and join all of us out there. We love seeing you, talking to you, answering questions, as well as reading your comments. You matter to us here at dannyjohnson.com. You really do. You matter to us, and we want to see you succeed. We want to see you set an example for all of those who are following you that are in your life today. Again, we hope that you enjoy today. We're going to talk to you tomorrow. We're here every single day of the week. God bless you. This has been the Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're going to make sure that you get awesome videos for your business career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.